joined by Landon Castle, driver of the number 83 BK Toyota in the Sprint Cup Series. Uh, I always get nervous when I say those things because I either get a number wrong or a sponsor wrong or a team wrong, but I, I think I got it. Yeah, that's it. BK um, Racing. How's it going this year? I mean, uh, I've talked to you a number of times in the past, and it's always been kind of you're either on a partial year or you're trying to claw your way back in. This year, you've got a full-time ride the entire year. I mean, how at peace are you? Are you just enjoying the heck out of this year? Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's uh, that's a dream come true, and, and it's something that I haven't had in NASCAR. We were just talking about, you know, racing at Memphis like five years ago, and and uh, <laughs> and so I I realize, and I, and I have come to realize it's like I've been around a while, and and I've been here. You know, I've had a hard card since 2007. Um, I have four championship rings with Hendrick Motorsports uh, with a 48 team. So um, it's uh, I've been around a while, but I've never had uh, my own full-time ride with my name on the door all season. So it's it's really cool, and it's it's a different strategy. It's a different outlook um, than when you're running a partial schedule or when you're just racing week to week and not guaranteed. We just sat down with Matt Benedetto, and he's been doing a lot of straight line testing, which uh, you can probably attest is one of the most boring things you can possibly do, <laughs> uh, aside from sitting in the wind tunnel or some of the you know arduous stuff that people do with racing. You did a lot of that stuff. I mean, you did a lot of testing. You did a lot of showing up at places people didn't want to go, and you just kept accepting and accepting. Um, how rewarding is it to finally have this ride after all that hard work? Because a lot of times hard work, even if the if the opportunity isn't there, hard work just doesn't pay off in this sport. It's it is very rewarding, and and yes, you're right. Hard work doesn't always pay off, but um, but I think it it does in one way or another. I mean, even without this full time ride, um, you know, I've done lots of straight line testing. I've done lots of uh, desert testing and and qualifying practice, and you know, Nashville, Kentucky, Rockingham. I've been to every testable racetrack that NASCAR <laughs> teams can go to. Um, and I did that with Hendrick Motorsports, and and the rewarding part of that is is seeing the results. Um, you know, when when we go to a test to work on, um, you know, an, a new engine package or a new shock package, and then to find out that they used it the next weekend and won with it, um, that's happened many times, and and it's it's very rewarding that way. And and then again, you know, to have the proof, you know, to have the the rings with my name on them, and to have the Hendrick Motorsports and and those teams, uh, you know, show appreciation to me for for something that they gave me the opportunity to do, sure. But to to appreciate it and you know and Chad Canales the way he, you know he looks at his race team, you know it was it's amazing to be a part of that team. So, um, you know those are all the things that were rewarded before I even got a full time ride, and um, but I mean the the ultimate gift out of all of that was um, to be able to get the opportunity to race at the Sprint Cup level because of the experience I have uh, testing for Hendrick Motorsports. For some people who aren't familiar with the gig that you had at Hendrick Motorsports, what all did that job entail? Um, it was really whatever they needed in terms of R&D. Um, you know, the teams, and, and what, over the course of the five years that I was there, the, the R&D department at Hendrick has, had changed and evolved into, you know, um, what it is today, but also, you know, it had gone through different trends and phases. So there was times that I was testing my own car, that had my seat in it and was painted red or something, you know, it, it was, it wasn't anybody's, it was never built for Jeff Gordon or Jimmy Johnson. It was, it was built for me to go test. And, uh, and then there was times that I literally got in the car that Jimmy raced on Sunday and we tested it on Tuesday. So, um, there was a lot of different things, but you know, every, uh, every crew chief had my phone number and, and you know, the, the cool part is, is when, you know, your phone is ringing as Chad can, calling and he's saying, Hey, Lane, and I need you. And, uh, and that's, that's how it was. I mean, those guys would call me and then a lot of times it was Rex Stump calling me to, uh, to take me testing somewhere. And, and, and like you said, you know, sometimes it was a, a two day straight line test in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes it was, you know, we would go to Milwaukee and do some fun stuff there. I mean, for a couple of days. So, you know, there was a lot of it that wasn't quite fun, but a lot of it, uh, was very fun, but I, I learned a lot no matter what we did. I've learned a lot about, you know, how they produce their simulation and how they um you know develop their race cars and and a lot of that is is very valuable to the race teams that i that i drive for now you know obviously bk racing who i'm driving for at the moment and and uh, and hopefully for years to come but you know these these teams that that are building their way up um you know i feel like over five years of testing and, and development 
at Hendrick in their R and D department, I've learned uh, a very valuable tool that that a lot of teams can use. Would you say that you were expo- uh, spoiled at all to the top level of equipment? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it's um, not. I don't even look at it as the equipment that I got spoiled by, but um, I mean, I definitely did because it's there's times that you know you get in. Uh, it, there's plenty of times that like we would be testing something wacky and the car drove like crap and you just like it was a pain and it's like oh my god get me out of this thing but i mean let me tell you when you go to a tire test at california and jimmy johnson's number 48 car there is nothing that drives better than that thing. i mean it's beautiful so yeah i got That's spoiled cool. with that stuff but the other thing you get spoiled with working at hendrick is just and and i guess spoiled is a good way to say it but but the real or the way i like to put it all the time is that you know i really learned how professional they operate and it is amazing to see their the way they do things and and you know if you if you spent a year at Hendrick and and um, spent some time in any of their departments and and worked with their people um, it's you'd have no doubt in your mind why they won five championships in a row why they've won you know ten Sprint Cup titles and two hundred races I mean it's it's unbelievable it's just their their organization is is incredible so how much of that is being asked of you now. At BK, are these guys looking at you saying, we really want to be like Hendrick, so uh, how much of this happens over there, or do you guys build things this way, or is it more just that feel? You know what feel you need to go fast, so that's what they're kind of looking for from you. Uh, For us right now, it's something, you know, obviously that's something we want to build into, but there's such a difference between Hendrick Motorsports and what BK Racing is. You know, there's 600 employees there, there's 40 at BK Racing. So it's not like I can, it wouldn't be smart to just go to BK Racing and say, yeah, we need to, uh, you know, do this because that's what we did at Hendrick. You know, there's, there's a, there's kind of a a crawl before you can walk, walk before you run. And, and that's what we're building up to at BK Racing. So I I do have, you know, those feelings and a lot of those fundamentals that I learned at Hendrick that I try to apply to my race cars at BK Racing and, and, uh, and to my team and, and to my guys. But you know, at, at BK Racing, we our guys are working seven days a week. They're working really hard. You know, there's one guy has multiple jobs, and uh, and and so it's tough to to survive as a small team. But you know, we there's a lot of people more than just me that have experience at big teams that, um, you know, that try to apply a lot of those fundamentals that they've learned to BK Racing. Do you think that the fact that you have a lot of experience in these Cup cars is allowing you to give the feedback you need without being questioned. A lot of times rookies, when you say, well, it's doing a certain thing, they may look at you and say, I'm sure it's not. You know, I'm going to just make this change because I know better. Yeah. you've got so many laps in a cup car, you really know what feel you're looking for and what it's doing. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's valuable. Um, The the only thing about that is if at this level of of racing, um, at the Sprint Cup level, if – you know, I feel like if even if you had a, a rookie driver and if the crew chief was was saying that, then that's the crew chief's fault. Be, then, you know, or it's it's either the crew chief's fault for not listening to the driver or it's the team's fault for putting the driver in the car. You know, like okay. in, in at this level, um, the driver needs to know what he's doing. He needs to know what he's feeling. And if he doesn't, he shouldn't be in the car. And if he does, but the crew chief won't listen to him because the crew chief doesn't have respect for his experience level, then the crew chief shouldn't be the crew chief. And that's where, you know, Doug and I work really well together. I mean, he, man, he, he listens to everything I say. And it's like, and I don't say this as if I'm right all the time. And I'm the one that's, you know, like, I'm not the be all end all in terms of what my car is doing. But if I told Doug that the thing was driving backwards, you know, he would, and that, that I think we need to make this, this adjustment, he would do it. And, and the same to him. I mean, we, there's a lot of times that we, uh, you know that he'll he'll want to make an adjustment that I don't think that we should make, but I, I trust him and and I think we should you know and we go with it and and that's why we've we've run well together. That's why we've um, had success this year and we've had some good runs. We just have to develop that consistency. But it, it's tough as a rookie in this sport. There's a lot of veterans out there that are hard on young drivers and and it's it's especially tough as a rookie in the Nationwide Series and in the Truck Series because you know there's good drivers in those series that are competitive and. And a lot of times those rookies have that natural talent, but they don't know what they're looking for in those cars, like you said. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that, that makes it tricky. But at, at the cup level, I mean, they're hard to drive, but, 
you know, the rookies get in there and, you know, even like the guys like Josh Wise that this is his first full time season, he knows what he's looking for. He's a good driver. Sure. And he's made almost all the races this year with Derek Finley because they work well together and because Derek, you know, trusts him. Well, well just take me through the decision yeah. process to decide that you're gonna do that because that that's a that's a major thing to decide that you're going to start and park when you're used to testing stuff like the 48 car. Like you said, on Tuesday, you may test the 48 car that literally just won the Mm -hmm. Sunday before. Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, it was actually an easier decision than you'd think. Um, you know, it's, it's something where you come to a point where there's, you know, there's no nationwide teams available. All the good rides are taken. Um, and, and it might've been a little ahead of, um, I might have been a little ahead of my time on that because, and, and I'm that's not like genius foresight or anything, but we just kind of looked at that opportunity. And when I say we, I mean my family, you know, my uh, my manager, Joey, and I, we, we all looked at this opportunity and said, you know, well, I mean, we can get in a nationwide car and just do what every other young driver is doing, or we can get in a cup car that really – only, you know, I mean, you look at veteran drivers are the only ones that were doing that. I sure. Mean, the youngest driver that was doing that was Michael McDowell, and he'd still already run a full cup season. Yeah. And so it's something where it's like, man, if we could show these guys that, you know, what I can do in a cup car, because everybody had heard that I test cup cars. And I mean, I keep doing it. So obviously I'm capable, but, um, you know, to get out there and prove to all these teams that that I was capable of it was another thing. So we were like, you know, let's you can, try it. You can miss a cup race by three tenths. So when you're testing, if you're three tenths off, it's not that big of a deal. Right. You're still you're baselining stuff. Yeah. But to get out there in a competitive setting, you know, cloud covers coming over, you got to change quarter pound of air pressure here. You were able to make these cup races, and and you know, you, looking at it, like you said, it wasn't a genius thing then. But you, you mentioned Josh Wise. Josh took the same path last year. Larry Gunzelman gave him an opportunity. And when he was able to go out and actually qualify for cup shows, it showed people that he could haul butt. And yeah. and now he's got a ride as well. So and, and it's the the first step. I mean, you almost want to look at your, just your core fundamentals of, of race car driving. I mean, because we get so caught up and got to find sponsors and man, if I only have a five race deal with a good team, it's like, man, if Kyle Busch gets in that car and wins, what do I got to do? You know, for us, I mean, it's like getting in a start and park cup car is let's just show them you're fast. Sure. That's it. I mean, let's make them want to put you in a race car to race. And, and, you know, I qualified 20th at the Brickyard and 15th at Michigan and, you know, like 25th at Charlotte in cars that had previously been missing races. Um, it made team owners say, Man, I wonder what he would do if we raced him all day, you know. And and that's that was our goal. Was like, it, it was actually starting parking. There was sometimes that like when we qualified really good, it's not that we weren't happy that we were starting parking. We wanted to race, but it was almost like you're quitting while you're ahead. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Like that was, uh, and maybe that's just the the messed up way of looking at it because you have no other choice. But I mean, there was times it's like we qualified at fifteenth at Michigan. And when you have that kind of equipment, you know, you can make one lap and qualify real good, but you you know, the pit crew isn't isn't sure. there and sure. you know, you don't have the tires. So you know you're not gonna go run fifteenth. I mean yeah. but you can qualify fifteenth. It's nice to walk out of the place and be able to go that whole next week and when you see people, you know, you get a lot of pats on the back and a lot of things. You know, people call, hey, you want to come by the shop and check check out what we got going on? I mean, that's... But on the flip side, how cool has it been this year? Because this year you haven't had to qualify on time. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think the whole year. You've been top 35 the yeah, whole year, right? Yeah, we've been top 35. Yeah. And you've had some pretty standout races. You've had some races where maybe qualifying wasn't as great or practice wasn't as great, but you end up in a really good position at the end of the race, and it's not fuel mileage, it's not attrition. Yeah. Like, you've driven up there. Yeah, we, I mean, we ran 18th at the Coke 600, just straight up ran there all day. Same thing at Michigan, Richmond. I mean, those are some hard races. Yeah. This, the 600 is a tough race. Richmond, I mean, you got to be good there. We ran 20th. Um, you know, we've had good finishes, and that's, you know, a, a lot of that. And we've also had good qualifying efforts. So, I mean, a lot of that has to do with what I've, have learned driving lesser equipment and things like that. But that's just, you know, that's just the racing aspect of it. You know, I've been racing my whole life. This is what I want to do. I know I can do it. And so uh, I'm, you know, really taking advantage of this opportunity to race for BK Racing. You know, my crew chief, Doug Richard, has 
years and I mean he won a cup championship before I was born. So <laughs> do you uh, remind him of that every now and then? Yeah, every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while if he has some like wacky setup he wants to try, I'll be like, Is that what you and Dale Earnhardt ran? Yeah. <laughs> but uh he, it's pretty fun. You know, you've talked a lot about fundamentals and we focus a lot on driver development with three wide life did you ever feel that you know going right to the cup level it was being rushed at all or do you feel like it was just the right thing at the right time to do um it wasn't it, it was it was the right thing at the right time i mean it there's a lot of drivers that have been rushed to the cup level but again i was starting parking i'll you know it was tough but all i had to do was make the race and as a tough job but you know we weren't I wasn't put into the Cup Series at 19 years old, expected to run for a championship. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so that's that's where a lot of that. You know, there's a lot of drivers that that are were you know came and gone because they came into the Cup Series at, in their early 20s or with little experience in Nationwide or little success in Nationwide, and they were put in good race cars and expected to win the title. And that's just not fair to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I'm really, I look forward to the opportunity to, uh, pay my dues. That's, that's where my whole mindset has changed in the last three years going from starting parking to driving for, um, you know, underfunded teams and then moving my way up. I, I want, uh, people when I get my big break in the cup series, when BK racing, you know, puts together a program that we can run for a championship or, or when you know I get an opportunity um, at Hendrick Motorsports or Penske or something like that, you know, five years down the road, I want people to respect me for it, not resent me for it. And and they there's a lot of young drivers that are resented for their opportunities. And and uh, I think you know I'm paying my dues right now, and I really want to. I I'm very motivated to do that and not move myself up the ladder too fast. Um, we're running out of time, but we got one last question. Uh, you've made some really good decisions, and like you said, some of them have been really well thought out, and some are just flat out lucky. What's the one piece of advice you'd give to kids that are trying to make it in the sport right now? Ah, uh, that's a good one, right on the spot. <laughs> um, man, you know, if I were to s bump into a late model kid or a kid that wanted to make it right now, and he asked me what I wanted, what what it would take, I think it's just a it, I don't know. It almost sounds cliche. It's what everybody would say, but you know, you've got to believe in yourself. You got to keep working. You can't give up. But I mean, you've got to, you've got to dig in and 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 work at it. Like you know, like your life depends on it. Because in my time, in the most crucial times of my career, that's what you know got me out of holes. You know, that's what got me from you know sitting for a year and not driving a race car. I I you know in two thousand nine I raced one race. That's the least. I had raced in my entire life since 1998. Yeah, you know, my entire life, and I was doing it for a living at that time. So that's not good. <laughs> no. You know, yeah. <laughs> I raced yeah. more races when I was nine years old, doing it for fun I than I, I did a, when I was doing it for a living. We saw a good picture of you and Mark Martin, I think, doing an ASA thing. It yeah. was an old school picture on your Twitter. Yeah. Okay, real quick, uh, 2013, will you make the chase? Um, I don't know. I'd like to. I'm going to try, but I, you know, we, we're hovering around this 30th place points this year so i think a good goal is to be in the 20s next year cool and uh and hopefully the following year you can we can make a run at the chase but i you know i um i would love to say that we you know shoot shoot to uh win a race next year that would be cool i mean that would be really cool to to get a w or something and put together a good program but we've got a long ways to go and and that's a that's a great goal but um you know i really you know, no matter who I'm driving for, there's so many different ways you can win a cup race. And that's why it's like, I don't, I don't expect for us right now and where we're at to just go and, you know, qualify in the pole and dominate a race. But man, it would be cool. Lucky, rain, fuel mileage. <laughs> Whatever it takes. It would be cool to win a race, like cool. a super speedway race. I don't care. I was going to say Daytona 500. It sounds like you're talking about that. That'd be a good yeah, one. That would be, That'd a, good be one. a good one. <laughs> All right, man. Well, good luck. Thanks for coming in and uh, cool, good luck thanks. for the rest of the year. Thank you.